Hi everyone, so in this presentation I'm going to go over protein, why it's so important, why we need it and why I'm always telling you to eat more of it. Um, so protein, proteins um, are, are considered an essential nutrient uh, and it can be broken down into 20 building blocks known as amino acids. So of these 20, nine are considered to be essential to the body um, because we can't make them on our own. We have to get them from animal and plant sources. The other 11 are considered to be non-essential because we can make them with the body. The body makes, makes the other 11 non-essential amino acids. Okay, so protein quality. Protein quality is very important. Um, there are different types of protein, complete proteins, incomplete proteins. Um, I'm going to go over them now. So when considering a protein source, one of the most um, popular methods is to classify food by its BV or its biological value. The biological value of a protein um, is based on its quality of, of the amino acids that are in it. So um, if it contains all nine essential amino acids, it is considered to be uh, complete. So this is commonly seen in uh, animal and dairy products. So we'll see some, exam some examples of complete proteins here. So you've got your fish, uh, you've got your eggs, uh, chicken, milk, soybeans, beef, and then incomplete proteins would be your cereals and your grains and that kind of thing. So the role of protein. So when when we do consume sufficient amount of quality and complete proteins, uh, it has a whole host of benefits. So let's just look at some of those benefits. So protein can provide uh, building materials like amino acids which lead to growth and repair of uh, body tissues. So like your muscles, tendons, ligaments, and all that good stuff. Um, protein is also very good for skin, hair, nails, um, muscles again, teeth, bones, organs, ligaments, tendons, um, all that good stuff. So it's not just for muscles, it has a whole, whole host of benefits, as I said. So, um, some of the other benefits would be that it acts as a buffer to maintain normal acid, um, acid and fluid levels in the body. Um, proteins move, move required nutrients around the body as well. And from protein, you can get four calories per gram of protein. So in carbohydrates, you get usually four, kind of 4.1, 4 4.2 um, calories per gram. Protein is around the same, so it's around that four, four calories per gram. And fats has nine calories per gram. Okay, so how much protein do we actually need? So there's there's been a debate about this. Um, depending on where you look, um, even down to like different governing bodies in, uh, in like Australia, in America, um, in the UK, everyone has their own kind of two cents worth when it comes to protein intake. But let's just look at an average intake. So for a healthy person that is at a healthy weight, um, but mainly living a sedentary lifestyle, maybe work nine to five and just maybe bring the dog for a walk a few days a week um, and doesn't want any changes in body composition. An intake of 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 grams per pound of body weight would be sufficient for that person. So when losing body fat, losing body fat, a higher protein intake is always, always a good idea when you're in a calorie deficit. So when you're eating less calories than your body needs. Um, it is important, it is very anabolic. So it helps to grow and keep uh, mus muscle tissue. When you're in a fat loss phase, 
um, it will be a bit more difficult to grow muscle. Not impossible, but it is a lot more difficult. So you want to preserve any of that muscle tissue that you have. Um, and a higher protein diet can help you with that. So let's see when we want to build some muscle. So studies have shown that, um, studies, sorry, studies that look at muscle mass and protein intake tend to vary from 0 0.8 to one gram plus per pound, not per kg, so per pound of body weight is safe. Um, a balanced approach obviously is, is beneficial on this. Um, so around one gram per pound of body weight is usually hugely efficient when and effective um, when you're trying to grow muscle and even in a calorie deficit as well. Um, another good point here is um, for elderly people, so we're not getting any younger, uh, we still need to keep that protein intake up. If we have any elderly parents or grandparents, we got to make sure that they're getting their protein in. Um, so research have showed that a daily intake of even 0 0.45 to 0 0.6 grams per pound of body weight is okay, but I'd even be pushing that up, or up a small bit um, within their diet as well. Okay, so let's see if there's any dangers in, in a high protein diet. So many people will tell you that a high protein diet is bad for us. Um, that is linked to cardiovascular disease, dehydration, calcium loss, uh, damaged liver or kidney function. But what I want to know is show me the accurate research. There's been no proper studies done that actually show that it causes any bad effects. Um, so here's what you need to know. There is no link to protein causing increased risk of coronary heart disease good stuff. There is no link to protein causing liver or kidney damage in healthy subjects. So healthy is the main word there. If you are healthy, you can have a higher protein diet. If obviously you have any conditions, then you need to consult your doctor and see if you can up your protein intake, either through a supplement or through food. Um, recent studies show a positive relationship between protein intake and bone health also. So let's look at our protein sources. So we found out what they do, found out now that it's not dangerous to have a high protein diet. Let's look at some of the protein sources. Animal protein sources is up first. So you have your, I know I have tuna down here, tuna, chicken, turkey, salmon, lamb, duck, um, pork chops, more chicken, it's all good. Get it into you. Now let's look at some plant and dairy protein sources. So we have your seeds, peanut butter, yum, uh, cheese, peanuts, almonds, tofu, fried rice, or fried eggs, sorry, um, cottage cheese, just don't have it before bed and like your lentils and beans and that kind of thing have protein in them as well. So that is your presentation on protein. I hope you learned loads and I hope now that you have a better understanding of the importance of protein. And if you have any questions, please let me know, send me a message and I'll be happy to help.